in the heart of the bustling city, amidst the whispers of secrets and the allure of forbidden desires. There existed a woman of unparalleled beauty and intellect. But beneath her facade of poise and grace lay a decision that would ultimately lead to her downfall. Lacan, a military commander, he has a strange illness that he can't recognize people's faces. One day, he visited Verdigris' house, a brothel, to play with a famous courtesan who's known for playing Go. He got beaten for the first time after so many years of being undefeated. This was also the first time that he was able to see a person's face, the face of Banshan. She doesn't sell her body and just plays go with her customers. She doesn't treat her customers as customers. Even pouring tea at them, she has an arrogant look, as if she was giving alms to a lowly peasant. But there are men that get attracted to the likes of her, including Lacan. He became a regular visitor to her, despite how long and the price it takes. He can only afford to see her every three months, to only play chess and go. Despite their differences, they forged a bond through their shared love of strategy and intellect. They wanted more than that. Lacan is desperate to buy her out, but there are two other rich men bidding for her. That makes her price go higher to a point that Lacan can't afford. Finally, she is going to be bought out by a rich man. So she made a huge gamble to her profession as a courtesan that will change her life forever. At a scheduled meeting, Fang Shan planned to play with Lang Khan in a room alone. They had a bet to give the winner what they wanted. However, in the midst of the game, they found their fingers intertwined and they surrendered to their desires, unaware of the consequences that awaited them. She got herself pregnant by Lacan's child that she wanted, but it would be a shame to the brothel if someone would find out. So she wrote to him that she, to be bought out, was rescinded. She didn't say more. They both know that Lacan is now able to afford her. She may have dreamed that they can be together, build a family, and play chess and go to their heart's content. However, she received a letter from Lacan that he was sent abroad by his father due to a family issue. He can't defy his father, his boss, and thinking about being away for six months wouldn't be too long. So he went anyway. Six months went by but there was no Lacan that appeared. She wrote numerous letters, but didn't hear a single word from him. Her plan failed. She got a baby girl to feed. She became an untrustworthy person and is now totally worthless. She was ruined. What she did almost made the Verdigris house close down. She's mentally ravaged that Lacan abandoned her. She was forced to take any customer and sell her body. Once upon a time, she was a star, but now she became a night walker. She slept with countless men 
and got herself infected by a disease called syphilis. After three years, Lacan came back from abroad and found the letters in his room from Feng Shan. He picked a peculiar parcel and found two dried branches. Recognizing that those were not branches and those were human fingers that meant to curse someone, he rushed to the brothel. He realized the gravity of what he had done to Feng Shan, but was already too late. He was told that Feng Shan was no longer there, and so was the baby. As the echoes of their shattered dreams faded into the night, only one question remained. Could love truly conquer all, or was their fate sealed from the start? To uncover more about the truth behind Feng Shan's tragic tale, join us in the next installment of the Scripping Saga, for in the shadows of despair lies the key to redemption. Music